No shoes required, just a glove, ball, and bat. In Havana's Fraternity Park, Cuba's national sport is on display in a casual pickup game. In Cuba, baseball equals national pride. The island nation long dominated world amateur play after Fidel Castro banned professional athletics in 1961. Castro used success in sports as a political tool, equating Cuban strength on the field and in the ring with the strength of socialist ideals. On a narrow street in Old Havana, tucked between weathered apartment buildings, is the open-air Rafael Trejo boxing gym, named for a student killed in 1930 in an uprising against then-dictator Gerardo Machado. This is where some of Cuba's elite boxers have trained for decades. Like their ball players, Cuba's amateur boxers are some of the best in the world. At Rafael Trejo, all ages are welcome, and even this American journalist. Since fighters here can't go pro, they're not competing for a payday, but for their country. Wilson Calvo, a boxer and coach, talks about sacrifices required like being away from family, but he also talks about the honor of a victory. La victoria, win it. The boxing program in Cuba is demanding. Promising athletes are identified at a young age. The sport here is highly technical, despite the threadbare equipment and tired facilities. Technique. Technique, uh. not so good. <laughs> Compliments on form don't come easy. <laughs> Uno, dos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Uno, dos? <laughs> But Calvo's smile does. <laughs> it's often said boxing is as much of a dance as it is a fight. And just as its athletes are revered, so are Cuba's dancers. Just movement is part of the language of the Cuban when they talk through the physical language and through the rhythm. Osnel Delgado is the artistic director of Malpaso, a contemporary repertory dance company unique in Cuba because it's independent. Delgado grew up in a dance family, studied at the state-run National Dance School, and graduated a professional dancer. It's very different from other parts of the world. I know many dancers that they need to like do another stuff in order to survive, but in Cuba, be a dancer is Exactly, it's like a career. Mostly of the Cuban dancers, they only dance. For eight years, Delgado danced with the National Modern Dance Company in Cuba. People told him it was a misstep, or malpaso, when he decided to leave, start his own company, and push the boundaries of contemporary choreography. Supported by the Joyce Theater in New York City, Malpaso is now one of the most sought-after Cuban dance companies with a growing international profile. Their tour locations include, yes, Boston. When we go back to a city that we already know, we feel like a family in some way. We have a very strong group of collaborators also in Boston. Delgado reaches back to traditional dance when developing new pieces. He describes the evolution of dance in Cuba, starting with couples dances. The first thing that I, that I know that was like a, a traditional dance, let me show you. They walk like, uh, you know, the park or something with a partner. The men take the woman in this position and try to move just side one, side one. And then the salsa or the song that came after was most like uh, finding the tempo more strong in the legs, you know, the swing, the, the hips. Afro-Cuban dance is another inspiration. African rhythms and moves passed down from generation to generation with Spanish influences. It's very important, you know, this kind of tradition. But yeah, as a contemporary group, we are always looking at new collaborations that help a little bit to transform our reality. The growth of independent organizations like Malpaso, perhaps evidence of a slow evolution of Cuba itself.
Malpaso was Cuba's first independent dance company. The company was set to travel to Massachusetts this year. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, their spring U.S. tour was canceled. The company says members are staying safe at home, quote, until we are able to share the beauty of dance in person once again.